Hi, hello. Guess who's back? Back again. This is still the great teacher. And now we're officially back with this video lessons. And you will see me with the same t-shirt for the next few videos because I recorded them back to back. But anyway, uh, for this video lesson, we're going to talk about sum and difference of two cubes. So let's start. But before we fully discuss what difference of two cubes are, it is important for us to know what those cubes mean. So basically cubes, uh, if you want the geometrical uh, explanation of it, it came from the concept of cubes and the volume of it where you get side times side times side, something like that. But to be more specific with what we are studying here in algebra, you can have this kind of review to guide you in identifying what numbers will give you a cube or how will you get a cube so let's say we have the following uh given so let's say for this example let's start with whole numbers and then later on we'll go with some variables so let's say that we have first one raised to three you can also have two raised to three you can also have three raised to three can also have 4 raised to 3, you can also have 5 raised to 3, and we'll continue until 10. 7 raised to 3, then 8 raised to 3, 9 raised to 3, and then lastly, 10 raised to 3. Uh, the big difference between cubes and perfect squares, there's actually... A negative num or negative numbers can be considered as perfect cubes but that will be for later in the meantime we'll focus with the positive or the whole numbers let's say we have one raised to three so this implies that we're going to use the base as a factor three times because the exponent is three so this will give you positive one this will be two times two times two so we use two as a factor three times and that will give us eight we also have three times three which is nine times three that will give us 27 you can also have four times four which will give us 16 times four that will give us 64 next five times five that's 25 times another five that will give us 125 next six times six that is 36 times another 6, that will give us 216, 7 times 7, that is 49, times another 7, that will give us 343, you can also have 8 times 8, which is 64, times another 8, that will give us 512, then next we can have 9 times 9, which is 81, times another 9, that will give us 729, am I correct with that? Yes, we are. Okay, and lastly, you can have 10 times 10 times 10. That will give us 1,000. So these are the cubes in relation to whole numbers from 1 to 10. If you raise those numbers to 3, these are the result. So basically, 1 is a cube. 8 also, 27, 64, 125, 216, 343, 512, 729, and 1,000. Now, if we have established the concept that these numbers on the right side are also related heavily with the numbers that we have on the left or the basis that we used, basically what I'm trying to say here is that when we're identifying the factors that makes these numbers a cube, we know that it's 1 and 1. Then for 8, it's 2. But the concept here that I would like to introduce is similar with the concept of perfect squares, we have the square roots. In cubes, we have what we call as the cube root. So basically, we can say that the cube root of 1 is equal to 1. The cube root of 8 is equal to 2. The cube root of 27, that will give us 3, and so on and so forth. That's why it's important for you to understand the relationship of raising a number to cube and then or to three and then getting its cube root by the answer of it so basically it's the inverse process also so they have that similar relationship and you can continue this until 1000 you get 10 
So basically, the concept here that we're establishing is that basically getting the cube root of a number, like for example, 8. So you identify the number that you use as a factor 3 times, and that is 2. So that can be it. So the dilemma here is that when you're doing this mentally, you don't have a calculator. Sometimes it's difficult to identify the cube root. That's why it's good that you get used to. It's like a multiplication table kind of thing. Try to get used to the cubes from 1 to 10. It's not, it's not a problem writing it down like this. It will help you out a lot. Always remember that the exponent implies that we're going to use it as a factor that many times. Okay? So that's the concept that we're trying to establish here. So you can, again, continue this until 1,000. And that's it. 64, that is 4. Cube root of 125. Forgive me if they're not aligned. I'm so sorry. But yeah. Hope you guys are getting it. Uh, cube root of... 216 is 6, cube root of 343, 3, 7, cube root of 512 is 8, cube root of 729 is 9, then the cube root of 1000 will give us 10. So this is the concept for that. But again, there is also a different way of solving when in relation to variables. So let's say that we have the given example for, or examples for variables. Well, this time around, I'll go straight to the point so that it will not be that complicated anymore. Basically, you can have any letter or variable that you would like to use. I'll use X because it's pretty much the, the, uh, the common variable to use. So you can have X cubed, X raised to 6 x raised to 9, you can have x raised to 12, you can have x raised to 15, you can have x raised to 18, you can have x raised to 21, and so on and so forth. Now, the thing here is that there is a pattern when in, in case or in terms of variables and their exponents to identify if it is a cube. Basically, if you pay attention, the ones I listed, the seven examples, all of them have an exponent. And the relationship between each exponent is that all of them are divisible by 3, a factor of 3, or basically multiples of 3. So you can use those different words. So again, um, wait, I'll write it down. Um, basically, we can say that a variable slash a term oh wait i'm so sorry a variable and i a term a variable is a cube if its exponent is a factor multiple or divisible by 3. So that is the right thing to do there. Now, how do we get the cube root of these variables? So there are different techniques also, but as much as possible, we can we can uh, refrain from using the, the radical symbols. We can just focus with this concept wherein it is divisible by 3. So if you wish to get the factor that makes this a cube root, divide the exponent by 3. So x raised to 3, so 3 divided by 3 is 1. So, its cube root is x. How about for x raised to 6? Just follow the same concept. 6 divided by 3, that will give you 2. So, x raised to 2. And if you follow that thing for all of these, it will basically make things easier for you to understand. So, we can have x raised to 9, that is x raised to 3. Because 9 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4, so x raised to 4 so on and so forth and that's it again whatever variable you use whatever letter it may be it don't matter as long as it follows this rule the variable of a cube or uh, if the variable is a cube or it's considered to be a cube the exponent should be a factor 
a multiple or it's divisible by 3. Okay? And earlier, I was trying to use the word term. That implies that we can say that a term is a perfect cube if both the numerical coefficient and the variable or variables are cubes. So that's it. So we will have examples like that in a few minutes. So let's now continue with some more examples. Now let's try to use these cubes for the difference of two cubes. So basically, the difference of two cubes has this following format, as you can see on your screen. And it's kind of complicated if you wish to overthink this. Basically, if you multiply this given pattern that I'm underlining right now, which is the quantity a minus b times the quantity a squared plus ab plus b squared, it will give you a raised to 3 minus b cubed. And again, multiplication is the inverse of factoring. Factoring is the inverse of multiplication. So when you try to get the factor of this, wherein you have a raised to 3 and b raised to 3, so basically two terms, two cubes, and the operation should be subtraction. So your pattern for your factor should look like this. Do not overthink it. Basically, you have to apply your skills to identify which is A, which is B. So we will try to show two different solutions depending on how you understand the use of cube root or basically identifying what makes this number a cube. And that's it. So let's have our first example. X raised to 3 minus 8. So you can have it this way wherein you're trying to figure out, hmm, what makes x a cube? Or x cube a cube? And what makes 8 a cube? What number do you raise to 3 to get x cube? For example, so you may pattern it using the given a raised to 3 minus b raised to 3. Wherein, you figure out that, oh, if you raise x to 3, that will give you x cube. And at the same time, if you raise 2 to 3, you'll get 8. So basically, we can identify already that A is X and B is 2. Or you may also do it this way. So the cube root of X cubed is equal to X. The cube root of 8 is equal to 2. Either way, it follows the same pattern, the same format. And the reason why I'm showing you the first solution is that it helps establishing the use of the pattern given that it is a raised to 3 minus b raised to 3. So to continue with this, now that we have identified that a is x and b is 2, we use the pattern for difference of two cubes, which is basically a minus b, then you'll have a squared plus ab plus b squared. So your a is x, so x, and then your b is 2, so x minus 2. So your a is x again, so that will be x squared, plus ab, so that's x times 2. And then your b squared is basically 2 raised to 2. So to continue with this, you'll have the quantity x minus 2 times the quantity x squared. So what's x times 2? That's 2x. And then 2 squared, that is equal to 4. So this is your factored form. So basically, class, the important thing for you to remember here is how you substitute so from the pattern given four again for the fat pattern given four difference of two cubes it is important for you to know what is a and what is b and from there you substitute okay let's have another example say we have 27 a raised to 3 minus 64 now it's important for you to remember the, the drill that we had earlier and at the same time now we have a term instead of just a number or a variable so you have 27, so we know this is 3 times 3 times 3, that's 27, so it's a cube. And a raised to 3 is a cube because the exponent is divisible by 3. 64 is also a cube because that's 4 times 4 times 4. So we know that already. So again, you may have different solutions for this, but I'll show you the one that I showed earlier, the first one. So we can have 3a raised to 3. So if you have 3a times 3a times 3a, that will give you 27a cubed. Then for 64, that is 4 raised to 3. Again, we base it on the pattern a raised to 3 minus b raised to 3. So your a is 3a and your b is 4. So by substitution, I'll write it here so that you'll get used to this skill. 
So you'll have the quantity A minus B times the quantity A squared plus AB plus B squared. So your A is 3A minus your B, which is 4. Now be careful with this. So your 3A should be raised to 2. So 3A raised to 2 plus 3A times 4. And then you have B squared, so that is 4 raised to 2. So this will be 3A minus 4 for your binomial. And for your trinomial, you will get 9A squared. So be, remember, when you're raising a term to any exponent, you use that base and multiply it depending on how many times it will be used as a factor. So since it's raised to 2, that will be 3A times 3A. 3 times 3 is 9. A times A is A squared. Next, what's 3A times 4? That is 12A. What's 4 raised to 2? That is 16. So this is your answer in this one. Let's have another example for difference of two cubes. Let's have 8 minus 64 e raised to 6. So we already know that 8 is indeed a perfect cube because that is 2 times 2 times 2. 64 also, we know that it's a perfect cube because it's the example earlier, basically, 4 times 4 times 4. And we saw that, we see that the exponent of e is 6. It's divisible by 3 also. So we know that we use 2 as the factor to be raised three times to get eight. And then here we also use four e raised to two. Then we raise that to three. Again, just divide six by three, you'll get two. So that's how you get it. So your a here is positive two. Your b here is four e squared. So by substitution, just use the pattern. So basically, you really need to tap into the skills you have learned from the previous levels with substitution. So again, we have the pattern a minus b for the binomial, a squared plus ab plus b squared for the trinomial factor. Um, then substitute, so we get 2 minus 4e squared. Then we'll have e squared, that is 2 raised to 2, plus ab, that is 2, times 4e squared. Then plus b squared, that is 4e squared raised to the power of 2. So this will be 2 minus 4e squared, 2 squared, that would be 4, plus 8e squared, plus 16e raised to 4. So that's it. This is your answer here. Still follows the same thing. We have difference of two cubes. Now, some, some resources, basically, you will see the concept of difference of two cubes and sum of two cubes within the same lesson. It's because they follow the same thing. We identify if there are two cubes, but the difference is the operations, which is the first one, it's subtraction. The second one, it's addition. And it follows the same pattern except for the signs. So I will show you uh, the pattern that we have for sum of two cubes. So I think we don't need to review cubes anymore because we have it earlier. We had it earlier already. So basically now, for the sum of two cubes, of course, the word sum so we're going to use addition. And at the same time, you see that it's now a plus b instead of a minus b. And you can see another difference wherein it's supposed to be minus ab instead of plus. So those are some of the differences also. To continue with this, let's now have an example. So we have x raised to 9. This is a cube because of the exponent. And 27, this is also a cube because this is 3 times 3 times 3. This is a SOTC, a sum of two cubes, because the operation is addition. So by doing the, this, just like earlier, so you'll get a raised to 3 plus b raised to 3 this time around. Again, it's now sum, so the operation is addition. So we have x raised to 3 raised to the power of 3 plus 3 raised to 3. So your a is x cubed your b is positive 3. So by substitution, now you be careful with this because again, it may have the same concept but there are differences with the sign. Okay? So instead of a minus b, it's now a plus b. That's your binomial. Your trinomial is a squared minus ab plus b squared. So that's the two differences. In the binomial, it's now plus and the middle term of the trinomial, it's now minus. Substitution, x raised to 3 plus 3, that's your a plus b. And then here, be careful. So x raised to 3 raised to the power of 2 minus x cubed 
times 3 plus 3 raised to 2. So your final answer should be x raised to 3 plus 3. Then this will be x raised to 6 minus 3x cubed plus 9. So this is your final answer for this example. Let's continue to the next one. So you have 27 again, then x cubed. We know that's a cube. 125 is also a cube. So we'll just follow the pattern a raised to 3 plus b raised to 3. Our a here should be, first we have 3 for 27 and then x for x cubed. And we can raise this term to 3. For 125, we know that it is 5 raised to 3. So your a is 3x, your b is 5. To follow... This means that by substitution, you will now have, again, a plus b for the binomial. For the trinomials, a squared minus ab plus b squared. So you'll have 3x plus 5. Then here you'll have 3x raised to the power of 2 minus 3x times 5. And then plus b squared, that is 5 raised to 2. So your final answer should be, 3x plus 5 for the binomial, then 9x squared minus 15x plus 25. So that's it. For the final example, let us now have c raised to 9, d raised to 12 plus 64. So this term is a cube because 9 and 12 are all divisible by 3. And 64 again, we had this example earlier. So it's also a cube. So this is by a raised to 3 plus b raised to 3. Again, don't panic. Just divide the exponents by 3. So c raised to 9, so it's 9 divided by 3. So it's 3. d raised to 12, so d raised to 12 will be 12 divided by 3. That's 4, so d raised to 4. You raised to the power of 3. Plus 64, that is 4 raised to 3. So your a is c cubed d raised to 4. And your b is... Four. So again, by substitution, we will have the following. a plus b, then a squared minus ab plus b squared. So you'll have c raised to 3, d raised to 4, plus 4 as your binomial. Then you be careful with this. You raise it to the power of 2 minus c cubed d raised to 4 times 4 plus 4 raised to 2. So your final answer should be c raised to 3, d raised to 4, plus 4. Then this will be c raised to 6, d raised to 8, minus 4c cubed, d raised to 4, plus 16. So this is your final answer. This one right here. And that's it for sum of two cubes and difference of two cubes. And that ends our video lesson for the day. I hope you learned something new or you were able to recall all the things that you need to recall and master all of the skills that you need to master. As always, remember, in case you don't see me or hear me, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Peace out. Respect, everybody.